I think this is the coolest the slave one has ever been was in this last episode. Um, even though the seismic charges weren't a part of it, I loved the shot of it rising in front of what's the Imperial cruiser ship that, you know, they, the emperor would ride on and they were writing at the beginning of the episode It was one of those shuttles. I forget the name of the Yeah. Shuttle. Yeah. One of those Imperial shuttle things it's rising up and you're like, I never really like grasped the scale of the slave one when you see Boba at first and it just keeps going. You're like, Oh, this is like pretty big ship. And then I love the reverse shot where like Boba's clearly obviously he's just, he's putting on a show and there was a shot that kind of mimicked uh, Attack of the Clones where the slave one kind of just runs into the shot. Super cool. And then when finally he's like actually trying to get away, the guns just flip back. He spins and takes out both ties and then goes into hyperspeed. Gone. And I'm like... That was pretty badass. Boba this whole season was so much cooler in the few episodes he was in than all all of the book of Boba combined, like okay, it's when you so crazy awesome. when you talk about though the most badass slave one moment, I always think of that book of Boba Fett when they attack the biker gang. He murders the <laughs> Sunday going. So I don't know how you through. can like church going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know how you forgot about that one. Yeah, that was a uh, pretty awesome. Or when it's like barely like destroying the Sarlacc, you're like, yep, this is. Pretty cool. Oh, another sh- another thing I want to talk about that I will say that I there were a lot of things I did love about this episode. The story was not one of them. It was fine, uh, but the technical aspects I gave it a four point four. There were some. There were a couple of things that were kind of clunky to me, like when um, Cara Dune's having a tough time with her gun, and so she decides, ah, screw it, and she starts just, like swinging it at stormtroopers, and I'm like, no one could take her out. She's in front of all of her, like whoever that, the, the group she's with, she's leading the charge. Her gun doesn't work and none of you can take her out. You stormtroopers are literally the worst. So that was one of the only nitpicks I had. Besides that, do you remember the, the one thing that was really cool when the TIE fighter was leaving the hangar and you're seeing it from the perspective of the pilot? And the ship just and takes off and it goes out of the hangar. So cool. Yeah, like, that was pretty neat. Never seen something like that. And having that kind of perspective um, in Star Wars yet. Yeah, I don't think there's not any other moments where you've r- ridden from the view of the pilot, especially a, a stormtrooper pilot anyway. So I thought that was cool. Seeing the spear anytime that mando uses spear is super cool lots of great stuff with the i feel like if we're going to talk about technical aspects we can't not bring up the deep fake luke skywalker yeah that was not good so that's why i gave it the lowest among you guys actually the dead eyes yeah it was just like he it is the eyes and obviously that's the part of the face that we must connect with as a viewer but also it was just he didn't have any like micro facial like movements like he didn't emphasize certain words with like his mouth or like the way that he like squints his eyes you know like we all have different ways that we add more emotion behind the way we talk and that was just like so missed and even his like audio seemed like they were always trying to like keep his mouth away from the audio so they weren't trying to like sync it up too well i don't know if you guys got that same impression i mean I thought... i'm all for them trying it though like I'm, I'm glad they went for it and it wasn't something that held them back from doing it they went for it it wasn't perfect but i'm glad they tried and yeah. yeah, it's still awesome it still lands for me this yeah year. it's interesting because the first time around what was it, a couple of years ago, like it landed it. I thought it, I could suspend disbel- like disbelief for that moment. And it was pretty awesome to see what they were doing with that deep fake technology. And like, wow, that actually looks pretty darn good for what, for well, like the technology deep, at really. the time. Yeah. And even, and they don't spend much time like on his face for a long period of time. Cause I think they know that shortcoming with the mouth and the expression, but to me, like that Luke, it took me right back to 
the beginning Return of the Jedi Luke and how he was expressionless as well and very kind of robotic. And so I thought I thought they pretty well assimilated to that character of Luke, all things considered. And yeah, this go around, I'm, I was a little more like critically looking at it, but it was still like, holy crap, what they could do back then with that. And imagine what, you know, they keep trying to do it. So it's something, it's an interesting conversation to have about with actors signing up for stuff like this and, you know, letting us use someone else's face or whatnot. But it's funny because like, you know, this was a CGI and the book of Boba Fett. They used deep fake technology. And I don't know if they used the corridor crew, but it was some group of YouTubers who they just they said, well, the CGI didn't land. Let's recreate it. And they did. And they did it with deep fake technology and it looked better. So Lucasfilm said, screw it. We're going to hire those guys. <laughs> and they did for the book of Boba Fett. And it's so funny because I remember when that came out and I saw Luke in that. I was just stunned how much yeah. better it looked than the uh the mandalorian and it's funny like the amount of flack they got in the book of boba fett they're like oh it's still he looks so like you know the dead eyes and this and that and didn't land for me and i'm like it's so cool what are you talking about it's just pretty like, cool. just accept that this is the world we live in now it's super awesome and yeah like the fact that as long as like the actors are good with it to use their likeness Characters can live on and the tech's only going to get better and better. So I I'm in the camp that they should recast it. Like I had seen a lot of fan recasts. Sebastian, Sebastian Stan, I think, has the absolute look for it. And didn't he do some like testing stand ins for those recordings? Maybe that was just a rumor that I heard. Um, I don't know. Like to build their face model off of him. But Speaking of all of that technology, um, the new Indiana Jones movie is coming out sometime soon, and they were able to completely de-age Harrison Ford using existing like film footage of him through over the years, which is so wild. Yeah, is it, it is also defect tech that they're using to do that, or I don't know. I just know that Lucasfilm like gave them all of the resources. Mm. I think regardless, I mean, even with all that, setting that aside, also with the technical aspects, we got the most live action use of the dark saber here, right? Than we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really cool. I mean, just their choreographed fight, like yes, their fight yeah. worked really well. And it was so awesome to see, all of that, punk. all their conflict loaded up into that, and then he's using the Beskar spear, and it's heating up, and yeah, yeah I just, super, I just thought cool. it, I thought it really worked well, and it was a good action-packed episode, but also carrying a punch with story and a conclusion, holding for a great cliffhanger. So I think yeah. your story rank is crap, Brody. Your three point five for crap. this finale. It's one of the yeah seventy percent, you know. You, you, you told the story you need to tell. You got it across the finish line. It's, it's not. It, it's Both not the, that is showcasing in here, man. He got he. It was even character building for yeah, him. Yeah, his. It's not character building. It was all oh, cool He got to. So I've learned what you like, and that's okay. Liners. It's okay. We're all allowed to like different things. You like shiny objects and flashy toys and things. You that did go not boom. allow me to like or dislike anything from last episode. So I'm not <laughs> going to let you live it down. <laughs> so I'm just saying that's totally cool. That's your wheelhouse. I appreciate the depth that they went with this last episode and the dialogue that was you know created out of it. But hey, that's totally fine. You like Luke Skywalker and you know, he finally did something cool for once. So that was like really he awesome. He did. Stuff. And yeah. I am a Luke Skywalker hater, but this was, this was kind of my early hot take, but maybe I'll come up with something spicier by the end of the episode. But <laughs> this is him finally doing something cool. Like for the yeah, first time, you. which I'm I don't know you. if that's a hot take. I feel like it although he was kind of a way. he was kind of against that Gamorrean guard in Jabba's palace that the beginning of the Return of the Jedi you're like oh but then so it, it didn't different. lead to anything yeah 
<laughs> Father, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> you will die. No, he's definitely his most badass form here, which I love because then it's a nod to my favorite movie, which is The Last Jedi. And it makes sense when you see how confident and powerful Luke is when he walks into this ship and he's he's force choking these death troopers. That was so This collapsing. man is yes, he is absolutely Jedi master level at this moment. And it makes sense that he would have such confidence and notoriety and respect that once he actually did fail, it would crush him because he's not used to facing that part of himself. So yeah. I think this further backs the um, direction that Luke goes in the sequel trilogy. Oh, man. Interesting. And the story set up that area for technical aspects that, again, I think that's the thing that shined the most in this episode. Luke, and maybe this is another hot take, but when he's going down that hallway, I bought so much more into the choreography of that than I do for most of the choreography in the prequels. Something that I think is really cool that I've noticed a lot of times in the prequels, yeah, like they're blocking, they see what's coming. Whereas like this, the whole thing felt like this fluid dance. And when he's getting ready to block a shot, it wasn't just like, oh, block. And I'm always thinking, well, if there's all of these things coming at you, how are you going to block all these shots at once? So Luke, as he's blocking, he's using like a strike motion to also block and also take one out to make the most of each swing. So just to add, just there was there was it was mm -hmm. it was super cool to see that again. He did teeter into the dark side there. It looks like with using that force choke, and so there was a lot of cool stuff there where you're like, okay, however powerful a lot of these Jedi masters were before, Luke's on another level. At least that's how it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's again, it, it really piques your curiosity because we know how you know, badass the Mandalorian is. And he could, as Moff Gideon said, he had trouble with just one. And Luke mm -hmm. took out... All of them. Whole, yeah. Was it a battalion? A garrison? I don't know. But he took out all of them. So, super cool to see Luke be not just the cool greatest moment of his career, but most Jedis to the point we've seen today. Yeah. And it was great to see like the mirror of the Rogue One hallway scene with Vader and that. So like the the minds behind the episode were honoring these layers and keeping it going. So I think that that also helps in as far as the immersive universe goes. Yeah. yeah. And that was I mean, that whole scene leading up, I think it just captured that tension that suspense and yeah to your point i think most of his choreography was very it was fluid but it was more so like purposeful and utilitarian like everything had a purpose to what he was doing whereas i think the prequels have a lot more fluid and dance and flamboyancy to them mm -hmm. where they're more flashy and like it's really cool to see them but less utilitarian like mm -hmm. less purposeful in those instances but it was just really cool to see him doing all that. And then, yeah, kind of touching back what you were saying, Amanda, the immersive universe side of things and Moff Gideon that you made me think of when Moff Gideon is, I liked him serving as kind of like a narrator or a guide for the audience, reminding them how significant the dark saber is and like, Oh no, like their plan has been foiled. I gave it to him. This is what's going on. Like they're he's adding to that immersive universe mm -hmm. and to that story of like playing into between the next steps for Mando and Bo Katan and all them. Like you don't just have Grogu and his separation. You now have this whole you have this problem of Mandalore and this conflict that they're addressing. And so I think when you can intertwine all of that into the story for just this one episode, top notch got a good feeling about Duel of the Ranks, then punch it down below to subscribe so that you never miss our latest ranks and hot takes from a galaxy far, far away. This is the way to some of the best Star Wars content out there. So, 
Do or do not. There is no trap. But do yourself a favor and... Do it.